literally 20, 25 years ago, we were trying to figure out how to get the attention of the major galleries and museums. And one of the critics said, well, you know, if you're around in 20 years, we'll come and check you out. And I thought, wow, that's a long time to wait. You know, to, you know, to a 20 year old kid, that's a lifetime. What was New York like, late 70s, early 80s? Well, I can tell you this, everybody was on the hustle, whether you were an up and coming artist or musician or a graffiti artist. We were all kind of scrambling to try to make our name. This is when the talking heads are getting off the ground. Blondie's starting out. But also, a lot of the hip hop stuff was starting to happen. And unlike the way things are kind of segregated today, we all hung out in the same area, in the same clubs, going to the same restaurants. And that was a, an interesting sort of sense of community. You know, I was painting trains at the time, and I got a call from a photographer and he says, oh, you know, I want to use one of your pieces on an album cover for a group called Run DMC. And I was like, Psh, Run DMC, what's that? You know, he gives me a little business card and it says 1133 Broadway on it. So I go down there and, you know, I meet Russell for the first time. And he's got like two people working in his office. You know, Russell was a low level college promoter and the guys from Run DMC were still in school. I was more popular than any of those guys were at that point. It wasn't until, you know, like, you know, 84, 85, when the records started to come out. And all of a sudden you realize that this little cult thing that was just something in our neighborhood really started to take shape and people started to get recognition. I was the creative director at Def Jam from the very beginning up until 2000. So really, in a lot of ways, I kind of had my finger on the pulse of what was going on in hip hop, you know, for, literally 20 years, from LL Cool J to Slick Rick, De La Soul, Public Enemy. I mean, I worked with everybody from the Beastie Boys to Jay-Z. That's a huge, huge, you know, range. When people say the word hip-hop, people think rap music, but really hip-hop is a four-legged table. You got breakdancing, and you have graffiti, and you have fashion and you have DJing and you have all these other things. That's one of the great things about hip hop is that we got a chance to do so many different things. What I really was trying to achieve designing that poster was giving the viewer a little overview of the whole history. And so that's why when you look at it, you'll see a reference to Public Enemy, you'll see a little reference to breakdancing, you'll see a reference to color. And so for me, that's kind of an homage to Lichtenstein because he's one of my favorite artists. And so I like showing little elements of that as well because I want people to know that contrary to popular belief, you know, graffiti artists do understand the evolution. We didn't just wake up yesterday. You know, we've been studying art because most of us went to art school. It just happens to be that we, you know, use a different medium than you know, the artists that came before us. Wow, we've come a long way. You know, this, this is uh, what Martin Luther King was talking about when he said, we shall overcome. It's like, it's nice that, you know, these stories are being told now. And, and it, it's not a hard sell to explain to people what a graffiti artist does and how talented they can be. I mean, the cat is really out of the bag and we've kind of broken down the door. So all the kids coming up today don't have to wonder how to succeed. You know, we paved the way for all of them.